Wide receiver rankings. Yeah, it's time. We're going to do this. Tell me why Croc's not crazy, and he'll tell you why I'm just out of my mind. Welcome <laughs> to Locked On NFL Draft. Let's go. You are Locked On NFL Draft, your daily podcast covering the NFL Draft. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of the Locked On NFL Draft Show. I am your host at Eric underscore Crocker on Twitter. And of course, we got Ryan Tracy with us at Ryan Tracy NFL on Twitter as well. We want to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. And we got a exciting show for you today. We put out our top five players, right? And we've been doing this. I mean, they the network, Locked On Network, they've been putting guys out there, uh, our quarterback rankings. They don't really get much mm-hmm. pushback from that. Running back rankings. Uh, tied, yeah. like, they've been putting these things out, but they get to the receivers, Ruh-roh. and Twitter gets in an uproar when you don't have it exactly <laughs> how they would have it. So I felt like today was a good opportunity to kind of just go a little bit more in depth as to why these are my rankings. And these are final. These are final. I won't be messing with the top five. Uh, we'll also, a little bit later in the show, go over guys that we felt like could be on here and either in our top five or Mm -hmm. how we feel about kind of the next five or six guys and kind of what they look like things we like from those guys but we are going to start with my top five today which at five i have Traylon burks now Ah. i actually got a little bit of pushback on Traylon burks being at five but not the pushback i think most would think there were people Hmm. that were coming at me saying this is a joke Traylon burks should be higher and you're always going to kind of yeah. get that on, uh, doing these top five uh, charts. But Traylon Burks, there's a lot to really like, right? I mean, you, you watch him. You know, obviously he has the big mitts. He plucks the ball out the air tremendously. I think his run after catch is really good. Uh, just the playmaker ability, the, the areas that they lined him up in the backfield, jet sweeps to him, throw screens to him, and he's taking screens 80 yards. He's an explosive player, and I know combine he didn't test as well. Uh, four, five, five, 40 yard dash, and he was able to sit on that time and didn't run at his pro day. But that's not why I have him at five. I think I really like a lot of those things. And I think early on in the process, when you're kind of looking at it, you just watch it on TV, and you're like, man, he makes a play here, contested catch. Uh, three guys there, it doesn't matter. He jumps over those guys, outruns guys to the end zone against Alabama. There's a lot to like. But you start kind of going through the process of really diving into his film, and you notice he's. He needs to improve a lot with route running. Now, he's six. He's a legit 6'2", 225 pounds. I do not expect mm-hmm. Traylon Burks to be someone who runs routes like, I don't know, Garrett Wilson or you know, Jahan Dotson or something like that, sure, right? Sure. I mean, not looking for him to be this huge separator, but I just thought there still is a little bit more. I put him kind of in the mode of uh, Debo Samuel and A.J. Brown, and I think that still there's a little bit more twitch i'm looking for in there for him to be able to really kind of build on i think you know even watching him at the combine watching him kind of run his routes get in and out of his breaks uh left a little to be desired for but overall i still have him at wide receiver five because i really like the explosibility of him i really like the upside and if he hones in on those things whereas i all right i don't have to look like dotson but let me really work on being the best version of myself i can be I don't know if there'd be a reason why he wouldn't be wide receiver one, two, or three in this class. Hmm. I actually don't have him in my top five. He's in that cluster right behind it. You could call it six, but he, he, Mechie and Pickens for me are kind of like a cluster right there at six, right? You like, I could split it anyway, but for me, like, I don't, I don't, I see the speed. I don't necessarily see it as like explosive down the field. I see him winning at the the catch point. That looks explosive to me, but the, it, it looks almost at times more like build-up speed to me. I think it is very much so something that when he can change his angle, especially like on the jet sweep stuff, especially like it seems like when he turns that corner, he's really able to pop and accelerate then, but not from a dead start as much from what I saw. So I just, I left him out of there just a little bit. I like yeah. the player, but he's not quite top five for me. I got you. Well, at number four, I have Drake London receiver out of USC and this is a guy who, you know, I, I believe in. Oh, real quick, just so everyone knows, 
I haven't seen any top five list. So I wasn't aware of how kind of mm -hmm. wild mine was until Twitter kind of reacted to certain things, which I'm pretty sure we'll get to shortly. But uh, <laughs> only other top five receiver rankings I've seen is my co-host Ryan Tracy's. So mm. I saw his and I have mine. But anyway, Drake London, I have him at wide receiver four. 6'4", 220-pound receiver, big-time catch radius. Um, I think if you are looking for someone to be this pure burner down the sideline, X receiver that just outruns guys, that's not going to be his game. But he still can win vertically on the outside by his contested catch. I think he's terrific at that. Maybe the best in his class at that, being able to position mm -hmm. himself to go up, box defense or backs out and go up and pluck the ball out of the air. Now, probably some of this comes from his basketball background. And again, this is the first time that he's really been able to kind of hone in on, hey, I am just a football player, not a dual sport athlete like he was at USC. So I think he's going to continue to get better at those things. One area where I think people are kind of sleeping on a little bit, a couple areas actually, one, short area quickness. He's good there. And maybe that comes from basketball, being able to cross guys over and drive to the basket. Mm -hmm. But he exactly. can turn guys around at the line of scrimmage and create separation right now on slants. Also, right after catch. I think he does a terrific job there with kind of breaking tackles at times. Is he going to burn, you know, catch it and just outrun a bunch of guys? No, that's not his thing. But he's a fluid mover in space, being able to make guys miss. And, I mean, as you see, if you put on the UCLA game and I was watching that live, I mean, he broke like four tackles, ran in four touchdowns. I was going to say, so, he might drag dudes around a little bit. <laughs> yeah. So I have him at four. Now, at three, I have Garrett Wilson out of Ohio State. Uh, this was a guy who, you know, he ran in the four threes. I'm not quite sure I see, see four three. But for a guy that's not the biggest, around six feet tall, that's solid. That's not short or anything like that. Um, mm -hmm. You know, doesn't weigh a ton, uh, slightly under 190. I think he's physical at the catch point. I, I like that with him. His contested catch or just the way he's able to contort his body in the air mm -hmm. and kind of adjust to passes and not care about if someone's under him or by him, great job. I mean, it's, yeah. it's almost like Odell Beckham. Right, I see Odell Beckham do that. A lot of people are like, oh, not a big receiver or something like that. And it's like, dude, it, it doesn't matter if you're a big receiver or not. If you are terrific at the catch point, like, it's a skill. And I think Garrett Wilson, he has that mastered. Now, I was watching him. I know certain things he does that are really terrific in his game. Uh, he understands how to work uh, defensive backs' blind spots, get them to turn around, go one way. He goes the opposite way. And he's explosive enough to where when he puts his foot in the ground and cross face, it, it, it's over from there. He can be a vertical threat. He can win underneath. There's not a whole lot to not like from him. I think he has a really good, well-rounded uh, game. I think he can be a little bit stronger in the sense of just kind of like contact balance, things like that. But that doesn't have to be his game. I think, right. you know, when you look at him, a comparison in the NFL would be maybe something like uh, Tray Trayvon Diggs. You know, he that's what he looks like out there. And I think, you know, if you were to kind of project like a high-end version of of Garrett Wilson, what would that look like in the NFL? I think it would look like something what we get from Trayvon Diggs. I think he has that type of ability, that type of hands, catching ability, things like that. He's terrific there. Uh, at wide receiver two, and I'm just kind of going through mine because I know you're going to have a chance to go through yours and you might have some of these yeah, same guys to touch on. But wide receiver two, Christian Watson at North Dakota State. Now, this, I think this is the big shocker. I, I got the most mm -hmm. pushback on Christian Watson being there. How could you have Christian Watson there? He didn't even really play against any real competition. Uh, he didn't always play fast. Like, yeah, there, there are questions that I have. But here's a couple of things I didn't notice about Christian Watson. One, it's very rare that you find guys 6'4", 210 pounds that can move the way he can and can fly the way he can. Like, when he has it in his mind, like, hey, I'm going to play fast right now, he is fast. And he runs by defenders, and he runs by them pretty effortlessly. All right? They yeah. said he, you know, he ran a four three six at the combine. People knew he was going to run in the four threes because that's what he showed on film, the ability to do so. I thought when he was playing in two thousand twenty, watching that film with Trey Lance in that season, I thought he looked a little bit more explosive. And I'm waiting for a little bit more of that to come back. Uh, I just thought there was a little bit more lightness and gliding to his game. Uh, a lot of people have an issue with the drop rate. His drop rate is like really high, but. I look at a guy, you know, me covering the 49ers and looking at them, and they got a guy named Debo Samuel. Pretty sure his drop rate is high. It doesn't matter if you're making plays. And when you look at Christian Watson, he might not have the uh, production of some of these other guys coming from North Dakota State who run a power offense and then look to get the mm -hmm. guys the ball, you know, here and there, whenever. And it's like, okay, go make a play for me. I think he could do those things. I think if he was in the offense that was more spread out and he was asked to do more, he could. If you plug and play him, and I'm not holding – 
Ohio State guys' offense against them. But if you were to plug him into that offense and was just like, hey, we're going to have you do these things, he, he would be open. He would get open. And, and if he had a receiver coach like Brett Hartline, I think he'd be even <laughs> further along. And he has a guy that's like a 50 or senior. He's a little older, 23 years old. So people are going to knock him for mm -hmm. that. But if we're just talking about ability and what he's able to do, I think it's high-end stuff. And he has to work on some of the little nuances of it. But if you're looking at like what I believe he can be, as opposed to some of these other guys, Traylon Burks, Drake London, uh, Garrett Wilson, you know, I look at him and I'm like, man, this is T. Higgins with more vertical speed. So can you just hone in on getting that out of him? And if you can, he's a walking thousand yard receiver in the NFL level. Now, one thing that was intriguing that I noticed while watching them was, hey, they put this guy in the backfield too. And not just to run routes from the backfield, which they did that. And that was terrific. But they handed him the ball off too. Here, get the ball. They handed yep. him in the backfield in shotgun and on top of the things he's able to do from pass catching ability. So I think he has a big time talent that is still not fully developed. And I know 23 years old, you would like to see it more developed. But I believe if, as long as he gets with the right people and they hone in on that, he's going to get there. He has all the upside. Can be a little better with playing faster. He he can do that, like consistently yep. threatening receivers. Um, there's a guy that's not on his list, uh, uh, Olave. And Olave, one thing that I think he does extremely well, he'd probably be my next guy in, but he plays fast. And I think Garrett Watts, uh, Christian Watson, you have the ability to do that, but you just got to be more consistent with that. And then my last guy, my wide receiver one in this class, Jameson Williams. I mean, just fast. Twitched up, speed, <laughs> tough, runs down on punt as a gunner, uh, what, you know, catch a five-yard slant, outrun everybody. Doesn't matter the angles you have. Two safeties high, doesn't matter. Split them, run by everybody, run guys out of their form. I mean, he's like Devontae Smith if Devontae Smith was even faster. And I love Devontae Smith <laughs> last year. Obviously, we'd like him to be a little heavier. Well, he's a little heavier, all right? Yeah, uh, right. You know, so, you know, it, he didn't play with Mac Jones, who I thought was terrific at distributing the football. So, Jameson Williams, I know people – didn't he just blow out his ACL? He, he did. I believe that guys recover from that and they return back to themselves. So, if I'm yeah. a team, all right, you tore your ACL, I'm going to have you back at some point this year. It might be November and I'm going to have you there for a late playoff push. But when you come back and moving forward, this is not just for right now. This is not just for the first half of 2022 season. This is for this is a 10 year pick. You're gonna be 100 percent the guy I need you to be next year. So that's my 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 list right there. Uh we're running out of time for this segment, but I know you have your top five we're gonna to get to. But again, just to recap of mine, Traylon Burks, Drake London, Garrett Wilson, Christian Watson, Jamison Williams. I'm pretty confident about that list. All right, but <laughs> you already know, man. Up next, we are definitely talking about Ryan Tracy and his list. But first, I want to talk to you a little bit about Bellline.net. Is your number one source for all of your betting needs and sports information. Find all of the latest sports developments, including this week's Masters Championships. And I'm excited to see how does Tiger Woods do? You want to bet on Tiger Woods? How is he going to hit? And, you know, par under all that good stuff. Well, betonline.net, that is the place for you to do it. And not just for the odds on that or draft odds where our players are going to be drafted, but they got podcasts and reviews for all different leagues this season. Bet Online is your continued source for all of your sports wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. Head over right now to the website today and use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action going on at Bet Online, where the games start. We want to thank you for making Locked On NFL Draft your first listen of the day every day. Make sure you are following the Locked On. Uh, experts of the NFL covering the biggest stories around the NFL every Monday through Friday in less than 30 minutes. It's free and available wherever you get your podcast. All right, Ryan. Now, you're on the clock, so I'm going to let you go through, talk to you, <laughs> your, your five, because it is it is different than mine. There are a few guys on yours that I don't have and vice versa, so mm -hmm. I'm interested to hear it. Let's go. Yeah, there's there's a lot of overlap though. I, I'll give you that. We talked about Traylon Burks; like he is not on my list, not in the top five. I started it with Jahan Dotson at number five because I think he attacks. He's, he's a little bit undersized. I get that; that's fine. Runs a lot out of the slot. That works for me too. I think more and more you're getting more teams that want to run, especially like like slot goes and those kind of things. Ways to attack the high coverage in particular out of the slot, and I think he's a guy that can do that. I feel that he is an all-around receiver. Like you can you can run him on the short crossers. You can 
run him, you know, slant works just fine. He can hit the outs. I think he's a guy that you can move around and will eventually draw coverage away from other receivers on your roster. And so for me, that multiplies his value because when a player demands coverage, that helps you attack the rest of the defense. So because of his versatility, that's why he's in the top five. Now, would I like him to be a little bit thicker? Sure. Would I like him to be a little bit taller? Sure. I could even take a little more, more speed. I always like that, right? It's clear that our two lists are are definitely based on different things. Like the speed at the top of your list is not the same as mine, although we have one guy in common for sure. It it allows me to kind of be moving around a little bit, not just have a thing that you can try to take away from a guy like you do at number four. I have Drake London number four. So we overlap there. We're pretty close. The only thing about Drake London is that you're going to try to give him double coverage. You're going to try to bracket him, especially with somebody taller or longer that can maybe try to high point with him. And if you can do that, then it becomes, okay, so how can he adjust? What can he do? How can he win another way? And I do think that he has more to offer, not as much as the top three guys do, but that is such an overwhelming power that he has. Like you said, it's not just the verticality and the strength that he goes up with. It's the fact that he can reel it in with those arms. And he's, I think when you watch him, he's very comfortable with close body contact. But he's used to posting guys up, right? Yeah. Like he's used to that in contact kind of movement and manipulating not just his body, but around another body. I think that's key. And a lot of people like to say that, hey, dual sport athletes aren't always as good at a sport, right? Well, I disagree. I think that his game shows up as much in his output as as Patrick Mahomes' baseball background shows up in his game. It's all there. You are the athlete you are because of what you've done. And I think it's dominant. If he gets in the right offense that is comfortable going to that high point ball, put it up and let him go get it. I mean, what did he have? 88 catches in two-thirds of a season, right? I mean, this guy is a, is a reception machine, a first down machine, and he's got a little bit extra wiggle that you don't always get to see. So I have him four. You, you know, one thing, too, that you talked about the contested catch and all that's great with him, but how much they just look to get the ball in his hands on screens. He mm -hmm. might have caught the most screens in all of college football. And for somebody that's a legit six foot four, 220 pounds, that's not something you're expecting because a lot of times those guys much longer, it takes a little bit more for them to kind of get going. But for him, he has that short area uh, twitch that you're kind of looking for that really you you don't think that you're getting from a guy of his size. And if you have a strong arm quarterback can take advantage of that and get the ball to him as fast as you can, that, that one foot plant and go, that's really going to help him. And now all of a sudden you have a guy the size of Travis Kelsey barreling down between the hash and the sideline. And there's ADB, maybe two, trying to get in the way. That doesn't look very appetizing to me. I ain't going there. So I'll let you guys deal with it. <laughs> so I, I really like the versatility of what you can do with it. Um, but that said, there's three guys above him for me because, again, what they can do and what they can force you to do. And Chris Olave is the next one. Like you said, smooth, attacks, plays fast, understands how to stack DBs, understands how to sit down in space and find those gaps. The experience alone from him, I think, makes him probably the most evolved receiver in this list because he can do it all much like like Dotson and a guy we'll talk about at the top I think that there's a, a little bit of limitation physically in terms of contact that's my only thing do you have to run around the slot does that make him too one-dimensional to have to be in there I don't think so I think he's got enough room to grow at the next level but certainly people can argue that that's what's happened so far in his career but because of the smoothness I think he's got even more route running ability yet to be uncovered by the pro coaches in the small things, the little details that he's already such a fast player in terms of the way that he stacks. I think it's going to help him even more. I, much like I thought Terry McLaurin was going to be good. And then he popped and he's much better at the pro level yeah. than I had him in college. Right. I think that could be Chris Olave this year. I really see that there's still more potential. And one thing that jumps out to me, again, and I kind of touched on a little bit with Christian Watson in the area where I feel like he, he can improve and has the ability to do so. But Chris Olave, I mean, he does it on a consistent basis, really firing off the ball, working to get on guys' toes, get them to open up, him sitting his uh, routes down. I think he truly understands how to attack guys' leverage uh, when they're play, trying to cover him. Does a really good job with that. There's a lot to like. And it was hard. I, I felt like my three through, or even two, <laughs> two through eight, you could – 
make up any type of combination and I would have been good with <laughs> kind of spitting that out and making it my top five. Chris Olave, Olave was another guy that easily could have been in my top five. So a player I really like. And we saw really like on more of a bigger stage, his vertical ability when he had Justin yeah. Fields at quarterback, letting it rip and him outrunning guys that were off coverage. Yeah. I, and let's look to see what, what, what happens here and, and where he lands. If it's somebody that he knows, I think there's more of this trend about, Hey, can you pair up somebody? that they've caught passes from in the past. We'll, we'll see. Yeah. There's a lot of maneuvering yet to do in this draft. That brings us to the top two. And I'm I'm in on Jameson Williams, in on his recovery. I'm completely with you. It's just the fact that I can't – it's like going to the store and you're looking in, in the window from outside. You just can't reach out and touch it right now. You can't have him on the field. You can't have him in OTAs. You can't learn your offense other than mental reps in the room. Okay, so I dropped him down a little bit. So he's two. He was wide receiver one for me all season until the injury. So I had to react to that somehow, but it is very, very close because I do think by week six, week eight, he's going to be somebody that as much as, uh, as Jamar had to deal with the, the drop issue in camp and then all of a sudden you see what happens, right? Like I think the same thing's going to happen for Jameson Williams. He'll almost be forgotten a little bit until he gets back out there and he might have a game or two where he's a little bit, little bit behind the curve and then it'll pop. And I think he's going to explode next season. And I do think it will be next season, not his his sophomore campaign. I think it will be his rookie season. So obviously, the the combination of what we've talked about him and Dotson for me is the versatility because we've seen him run the jet action. Obviously, we we know his attitude on the special teams things, but I think there's a lot more creative things you can do with him in the league. The little pop passes that everybody does now. You know, the little inside handoffs, underhand, who's he, what's it's, you know, there's all kinds of interesting things that because of his, not only his long speed, but like you said, his ability to take a short pass and really turn it on and find that gap and explode through it. I think yeah. the home run hitter that he is, they're going to get really creative with him if he gets with a coordinator that is open to it. So that brings me to my number one. That's Garrett Wilson, the other Ohio State receiver. You mentioned it a lot. It might be his best trait. The ability to manipulate his body in the air or at the catch point. But I don't think it's his only one. He is one guy that I'm like, okay, so if you take it away over the top, can you can he run a drag? Okay, you're gonna you're gonna throw those underneath zones, you're gonna jump right into that lane. Okay, fine. He can hit a double move on the outside. Like he I don't think that there's a way for a modern defense without devoting two players to it to take him away because he's got enough ways to win in his tool bag. That's the big thing for me. He's, I think, in terms of skill set and ways that he can beat you, he's probably the most well rounded in this class. And that's why he's number one for me because I don't want to have to try to defend him. It might take him a little bit of time to get to speed with his quarterback, but what are you going to do then? God forbid he's across from somebody and you have to worry about two guys that you have to actually game plan for. I think he's the game plan killer right there when he gets a little time under his belt. So not too much different, I think, with, with, with our top fives. You know, we have three similar guys, so we're kind of on the same page there. Obviously, I have the wild card with Christian Watson. I'm kind of banking <laughs> on the high upside and, and better, uh, you know, coaching and attention to de detail as a pass catcher. Uh, can you improve on those things? You got Chris Olave in there and Jahan Dotson. I think both of those guys, terrific players. But up next, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about guys that just missed being our top five maybe why they aren't in there and how they easily could be. This is a very talented group. Can't wait to get to those guys and more. But first, definitely want to talk to you a little bit about Built Bar. And have you tried the Built Bar Puffs? If you haven't, I'm telling you, they are a treat and they're probably going to be your best Built Bar, the one that you go to the most. They are legit. They are good. They are protein infused. They are marshmallowy. They are fluffy. They are not just a protein bar. They are a treat and they are covered in 100% real chocolate. Puffs are a fan favorite with some incredible flavors. Yummy cinnamon churro, coconut marshmallow, banana cream pie. They're all really good. All Built Bars are covered in 100% real chocolate. Yes, that includes the Built Bar Puffs as well. They are low in calorie, high in protein, and replace that with any candy bar. because These are better. A typical candy bar has anywhere between two to 300 calories. Go to Built.com right now and scroll down to the macros charts. So if you are into counting your macros, they have a chart for you, and you'll be blown away by the high protein, low in calorie, high fiber, low in carbs that these have. Most Built Bars contain 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, 4 net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. Compare that to any candy bar. And, I mean, come on now, 30 grams of sugar in those, dozens of net carbs. You don't want that stuff. I'll tell you what you do want, though. 
You want the mint brownie, coconut, coconut almond, and all the new flavors that Built Bar is coming out with all the time, including white chocolate cookies and cream. They are all delicious, and they have new flavors coming all the time. If you think there's a flavor that you might think is good, they'll make it. And if they do, it'll be delicious. At Built Bar, the first thing they want to do is make sure that this thing tastes good for you. They want to make it be delicious so it's like a snack, right, in your pantry that's for your kids. But it's not for your kids. It's for you. And then they circle back around, and they make sure that they make it as healthy as possible. Go to Built.com right now. Use promo code LOCK15 to get 15% off of your order. Again, use promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at Built dot com so ryan let's talk about some guys that maybe didn't quite make it but could easily be on here because that's going to be the pushback right uh maybe mm -hmm. it's a listener of a certain college and they watch every snap of this guy and they're like man you guys are missing out with it like no we're not missing out with it we think he's really good too yeah. i think you could easily put him in the top five and there are yeah. a bunch of guys that are kind of in that <laughs> role and i and i'm going to start off with for me chris olave as a matter of fact i'll start somewhere else because we already talked about that he could I, I flipped our guy that puts together all the graphics. I flip flop a few guys. Chris Olave was one of them. And he's like, make up your mind. I'm like, man, I'm trying to it's so hard. I like these guys so much. All right. So Chris Olave, here's my first guy out. But my next guy out was probably George Pickens out of Georgia. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the injury bug kind of bit him a little bit. So this is a guy who wasn't able to put his full ability on display just yet. I mean, he's a, he's a guy who, you know, is coming out. Uh, rookie after his freshman year, you probably would have thought that he would be your wide receiver one in this class. I mean, he, he's that good, contested catch guy, understands how to attack guys' leverage, turn him around, sit down his routes. He has nice twitch and suddenness. I, I think of anyone, if you're if you were to say, All right, Croc, you're wrong on your top five, but outside of that, who's going to be the most productive receiver in this class? Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised at all if it's George Pickens. To me, he's your legit alpha X. But the injury and him coming back late and maybe not being the most sudden already, that might have a little bit to slow him down. But big time ability, I actually had him. Him and Olave were in my top five. And then yeah. I kind of moved some stuff around and they ended up bumping out. But who is your first George, guy kind of out? Just to, just to touch on Pickens, too. He's, he's the offensive equivalent of Derek Stingley right now. Yeah, I agree with you. He started so hot and now he's been injured. And, I mean, he got nine targets in 2021. That's hard to go off of. You know what I mean? And, and so I, I'm totally with you. I think he could be the most productive guy when it's all said and done. Five years from now, we're talking about second contracts. He might get the biggest payday. I don't know. It's That's the reason he's not in the top tier for me, not in the top five, because I just don't know what the long-lasting effects of that injury in particular are going to be on him. Now, he looked pretty good in A play in the championship game. You know, So the most recent action we've seen on the field but is that enough volume to sell you? So for me, I'm taking the safe road and, and I'm going to back off. And he's in my second tier just behind Burks and along with John Mechie, who's in the same kind of situation, right? Was really productive. You can see him. I, I mean, people call him a possession receiver and I'm not sure exactly wh wh why they think that just because he caught a lot of possession first down type balls. He can move too. He's got the athleticism to stretch a defense as well. It's just, again, what that recovery looks like. So Burks, Pickens, Mechie, like it's it's a coin toss. They're they're the cluster of my second tier right there, and it's just the three of them. Yeah, and Mechie, he's a guy that can come in right away. He, oh, you know, obviously once he's fully healthy, but outside receiver, slot receiver, wherever you want to line him up, he's able to win vertically. He's good yards after catch type guy. Wouldn't be surprised at all if there's special teams uh, aspect to his game as well. He's another guy that's right there just missed. But here's a couple guys. One that's not being mentioned enough, Jalen Tober out of uh, South Alabama. He showed mm -hmm. a lot at the Senior Bowl. He's a guy that maybe wouldn't be considered a top five receiver, but a guy that probably should be talked about a little bit more than what he is. And then a couple other guys. One, Calvin Austin. I love him. I loved everything about him at the Senior Bowl. If there were no Christian, uh, Christian Watson at the Senior Bowl, Calvin Austin would have been the best receiver there. Alec Pierce, he's another guy that was there. I thought he showed a lot. First note I have on him is, wow, he's much more twitched up than what I was expecting. Wow, mm -hmm. he's beating guys over the top. Oh, he goes to the combine, he runs a 4-4-1, 4-3-3, unofficial, right? Yeah. We know he could be that contested catch guy. So there are, like, some legit receivers in this class. I, I think – here's what this class is missing. I think they are missing that, like, that top 10 guy. And I think Jameson Williams, if not for the injury – Probably would be that. Like, that's how high 
yeah, I view I view him. But honestly, I, Drake London might have been too if he hadn't gotten injured. Right. If he but kept going, Drake he'd have broke hundred catches. Oh, I mean, he, he would have broke 130 catches. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> I mean, look who he's catching passes from. <laughs> look who he's catching I mean, he's catching passes from Jackson Dart and uh Keaton Slovis, who aren't I'm not saying they're like bad, but Clearly, I mean, both guys are transferred. Starts a freshman, but yeah, but well, yeah. enjoy watching Ole Miss next season, folks. I'm just gonna say it now. Oh yeah, I'm dark. excited to watch Dark there at Ole Miss. <laughs> <laughs> Lane Kiffin. I am excited to see that. That's something we got to talk more about this come this off season. But high high catch guy. I mean, can we name another receiver at USC? And for I as can't. much targets as he got, and how, how much he produced with everybody knowing he's getting the rock now. The year before, and this is one thing about Drake London as well. Year before they they did have you know guys like St. Brown and they played mm-hmm. they played uh Drake London more in the slot last year he was more of a primarily outside guy so he has that versatility a lot of these guys but ter- terrific class so is there anyone else you kind of want to touch on I know we're we're forgetting guys but don't worry but before this draft process we will really start diving more into the day three guys and get into more receivers that all y'all should know about. Yeah, day two, guys, you hit a bunch of them. Uh, I think Pierce is there as well as that cluster there. I think uh, Cleo Shakir could could sneak yeah. into day two. Poison State. Uh, maybe mid-third round-ish kind of thing. Yeah, a, a guy that does a little bit of everything. Um, David Bell maybe at the back of three could possibly get there. Um, David I, I Bell, does this drop off? Does, does the drop off with David Bell kind of remind you of Johnson a couple years out of Minnesota? Because remember, Johnson, a yeah, lot of people talked about him as, oh, this is going to be a – uh, day early day two type guy, and he wasn't drafted to like maybe fourth round. And that seems like David Bell, where there were a lot of people that loved everything about David Bell. And then, kind of, once you start kind of going through this class and it starts forming a certain way, it's like, wait a minute, he's kind of on the outside looking in in the sense of day right. one or maybe even day two guys. He's hanging on by a thread to the top 100 for me right now. And I, I probably won't have my standings completely finished until next week, the week early in the week after he might fall a little bit farther and get into that top end of four. Right. Um, I think you have some reclamation projects as well. Uh, Justin Ross in the fourth, I think is probably worth the investment. Right. Can, oh, can he recover from that injury? Right. Like uh, dubs drumming, like guys on day three, we're going to get into all of them. Well, but I Sky think those Moore. are the big ones that like, did we talk about Sky Moore? Sky Moore uh, is another guy. No, we uh, haven't talked about him yeah. enough. We never do. He's a day two a, guy for me, too. Early day two. I, I mean, I think, you know, if, if it were like, I picked 33 Jacksonville Jaguars, probably not there because they just paid a whole lot of money for receivers. But if somebody took him right. at 35, 36 or whatever, I wouldn't at all be surprised. A guy who, had, you know, he reminds me a lot of, of um, maybe like Golden Tate. And I don't know if it's because of the number that he wears. Mm. You know, where he's wearing number 24 out he there, but it's like, you know, just kind of how he's built, not this tall guy, but, you know, playing the slot, play outside, winning vertically, you know, tough, you know, contact balance, all those things, plays fast, uh, instant separation. There's a lot to really like about Sky Moore. That's another guy that, you know, he's right there in kind of that cluster, but good receiver class. How many guys do you think go in the top thir- uh, 64 picks? How many receivers? Top 64, I'm looking at eight, maybe nine. All right. And I, yeah, and that, that's about right. If you if you look at maybe even a couple years ago with you know Debo Samuel and all those guys, there was a huge run in the second round. I yeah. think this class, there's gonna be a run in the first and another run in the second. I wouldn't be surprised You're if there's about second. 10 to 12 <laughs> guys that end up going in the top 64 picks. But that's gonna do it for this episode of Locked On NFL Draft Show. We want to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. For your second listen of the day, you can listen to Locked On 49ers with myself and Brian Peacock or Locked On Chiefs with our guard, Ryan Tracy. We are going to be back Monday. You know what it is. It's Mock Draft Monday. Mocking for your team. Hoping that we pick the right guys for you so you guys don't beat us up in the comments. <laughs> but till next time, we are out, y'all. Peace. <laughs>